Hi, so I'm going to show you how to get started with PuckJS and Bluetooth Low Energy using the graphical editor. So as you get your Puck, it will come with the battery pre-installed but with a piece of plastic that stops it from being on. The first step is just to peel the silicon case off and then tip out the printed circuit board. Um, and you'll find that you can just get something blunt and push from behind the battery to take it out. Now inside you'll find there's a very thin, hard to see bit of plastic. Um, you just need to take that out and remove it and put the battery back in with the plus facing away from the PCB. And now you need to put the um, this edge of the puck with the text on it facing the lip that's in the case, uh, otherwise the button won't work. So if we take that and we put the case back on, we should have a working puck. So now all we have to do is click connect up the top left of the web IDE. Um, you ought to look at the quick start on the Esprino website for how to actually um, get using this because it's different to, um, to enable web Bluetooth on different computers. But um, you just click this, it'll say web Bluetooth, and you click that and you'll have a chance to pair with a specific device. Um, if you wait a little bit, it will tell you what the um, what the status of connection is down at the bottom, and you'll get a, um, a console input to the to the board itself. Um, you can ask it to do things like add up, and it will do them on the puck and return the result to you. Um, but we're more interested in the graphical editor at the moment. Um, so if you click this button, it will switch over from the um, from the text editor to, to the graphical one. And you'll see there's some code pre-installed in there. Um, so to use this, all you have to do is click that button and it will send it to Esprino. And now, if you press the button, it will light up and it will turn out again. Um, but we want to do something with, with Bluetooth. So um, let's get rid of this, drag it in the bin, and look at the, um, at the Bluetooth functions. So you've got some functions here that call code when the device is connected and when it's disconnected. Um, you've got items here that um, specify a certain type of device. You're probably more interested in device starting with because then it will use any available PuckJS um, that it finds. Uh, and then you have characteristics and these are types of data that you might want to read or write. So for starters, let's um, Let's turn our PuckJS into a device that we can control from a phone. Um, you can do this normally with something like Web Bluetooth, but this will turn it into a kind of classical Bluetooth device um, that can be um, that can be accessed in a totally standard way. So we'll have this, and we'll say when something changes, and we'll make that something the digital characteristic. And so when that changes, we will um, light an LED up with the value from that characteristic. And now all we need to do is send it over to Esprino. Um, so you won't notice anything happening immediately um, because actually we're connected to the Esprino. So we need to disconnect. Um, and I'll just clear the screen here so you can see what's going on and I'll um, connect with my phone. Okay, so now I have my um, my phone with um, the NRF Connect app installed. This is an application by Nordic who make the chips that are used in a lot of Bluetooth low energy devices. And you'll see here that um, there are a lot of Bluetooth low energy devices, but this is the one that we connected to. So if we hit connect on here, um, we'll see hopefully a list of services that are shown. Um, these are all built-in ones. This is a um, PuckJS specific one that allows you to program it. And this is the one that we've just added. So if I now click on here, we'll see that there are um, various things we can do. We can read from it, we can write to it, and we can get notifications. But all we're actually interested in now is writing to it. So if I change this to a uint8, and I just type one in here, this should now write one to the LED and turn it on, um, which is hard to see because of the light, but you can make it that much better if I shade it. Uh, and for instance, if you want to turn it off, all we have to do 
is change that and write a zero to it. Now, if we want to control one puck device from another puck, we can do that using the Bluetooth blocks as well. Uh, for that, we really want the, um, the Bluetooth set block here. So this block will set a certain characteristic, so a kind of type of data, on a certain device to some value. Um, so if we drag in the, um, the things we need here, we'll drag in the characteristic. Now, if we'd set up the puck like we did in the last example, um, we could have set the digital characteristic on that puck to a value directly. But we can actually do better. We can take a completely unprogrammed puck and we can use the UART TX, which, um, which comes on, on every puck by default. And this allows you to send arbitrary JavaScript code. So um, if we choose a device now, we're going to choose any device that's a PuckJS device. Um, if you wanted a specific device, you could just drag that in and then change the, um, the name of it to the actual name of your puck. Um, and now we want to choose what to set it to. Now, unfortunately, we can't just use the text block here because we can't put a new line in the text block. And we need to have a new line to um, tell the other Esprino that it's the end of a JavaScript command that it should execute. So instead, we have to drag in this JavaScript expression block. Um, so now, if I wrote in quotes um, led.set and did a new line with slash n, um, this will allow us to turn the LED on on the other PuckJS device. Um, all we're going to do is um, let's maybe add some um, LED flashing here so that we have some idea when things are happening and when they're not. Um, so we'll we'll write like the blue one first and then the green one second um, or when everything's actually complete and we'll do it when the button's pressed so um, if we upload this now um, you'll see the upload completing here and now if I press this button hopefully we'll see blue LED will flash and a little bit later uh, it'll be looking for the puck, but it'll it'll flash the green LED to say it's finished, and then the red LED will light. So if we wanted to turn this off again, um, maybe when you release a button, all you'd have to do is duplicate this code, put it down here, set this to the falling edge of the button, and um, set that to reset, and then upload again. And now, obviously when I press the first time, it won't do anything, um, but we just wait until that's finished. And then we let go of this, and hopefully it will find the puck and we'll turn the light off. Yep. So um, we did get an uncaught error here, and this is because very occasionally it just can't find the device in the second or so it has to, to search for it. You'll have to um, cope with the fact that sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. So if you don't get a response, you have to deal with it. But um, on the whole, you know, it actually works pretty reliably. Um, so that's nice and easy. Um, you can send pretty much whatever command you want, but the whole thing has to be less than 20 characters because you can't send more than that over Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, so if you want to execute a more complicated command, what you can do is you can log in to the other Esprino PuckJS uh, and you can actually define a function here and then you can call that function by name in here. And um, and then you can do like way way more complicated things. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen here, please subscribe because I'm going to be trying to put more videos up over time showing you how to use PuckJS and Esprino boards to do all kinds of fun things.